How awesome would it be if you could automatically, without trying, get rid of something you no longer needed? And then, when you did need it again, automatically get it back. We witness this happening every spring with our horses. Us and our clients get to be a part of their shedding process that they go through every season. What if I told you you had this innate ability as well and that you could create a process for yourself of shedding what you no longer needed but getting it back when you did? Curious? Let's discuss. Hi y'all, it's that time of year again for us at Pecan Creek Ranch. The horses are trading their fluffier winter coats for a lighter, sleeker look to get them through the warmer months here in Texas. Anyone who has been through a spring with horses gets to witness the amazing and messy process of them shedding their winter fur. Shedding is a natural and voluntary biological function for many animals. That means it just happens because that's how their bodies work. They don't have to make any decisions about it or try to make it happen. Their internal biology, evolution, and the external forces of weather and temperature that come with the change of seasons make it happen. But this video isn't so much about horses as it is about what we humans, what you, are capable of shedding. Yes, humans shed skin and teeth and hair as a part of their normal involuntary biological processes, of being a human and growing and changing. But what I really want to talk about is the process of shedding other things that are no longer working for you. Things like behaviors, beliefs, habits, ways of being and interacting with others, relationships, and a dozen other things that make up life as a human. Sometimes we go through an involuntary process of shedding these things. It just kind of happens automatically as we grow. And there are times when we can consciously make the decisions to shed some things in our lives. Maybe it's a friendship that we've outgrown or phrases we repeat to ourselves that are hurtful. Sometimes we shed the way we respond to our emotions or the way we react to others. Sometimes we shed expectations we have or personal beliefs or values. For anyone who has endured a traumatic event, experience, or upbringing, you probably have some experience with needing to shed some ideas or ways you've survived the trauma to make room for new ways of being. Just like the horse's winter coats don't work well in summer, the ways we have learned to survive our traumas don't work well in healthier, more resilient environments. So we have to shed the old ways of being to make room for new ones. That can be a scary idea though, because what if you need those old ways again? Humans are terrible predictors of the future, and it can seem foolish to let go of ways of thinking or acting or believing that have worked in the past. The great thing about shedding is that it happens in a system that is designed to bring back whatever was shed when it is time and when it is needed again. Next fall, these thicker, fluffier coats will start coming back just when the horses need them to survive winter. Whatever you have to shed, it will be unique to you. Shedding is different for everyone, but there is usually some level of discomfort involved. For Jetta, it seems to be itchy. For Gemma, it doesn't seem to be much of a concern. But as you can see, their winter coats come in much differently, so it makes sense that their shedding experience would be quite different as well. They are different horses with different genetics, experiences, and needs. So, of course, their shedding will correspond with their differences. Just like the horses, when us humans intentionally start trying to shed, we all have different experiences with it, even with, if we are trying to shed the same things. There are an endless amount of factors that determine how your shedding process goes, some of which may not have anything to do with your choice or your actions. Our genetics can play a role, things that happen to us and our families before we were ever born, where we live, who we live with, our age, gender, the culture we are surrounded by, and even the weather can influence our shedding experiences. Shedding can be kind of ugly too. The process of the horses shedding their coats gets hair everywhere. You begin to think twice about your chapstick and what clothes you wear around them. 
And for a while, their coats may look patchy and uneven, maybe a little dull or chaotic. They can also look filthy, like Kai's. He likes to roll in the mud and get it caked on his fur, maybe in an effort to cool off during the process or to try to deal with the discomfort he may feel. Shedding is messy for humans too. The process can be draining, bring up uncomfortable emotions, cause exhaustion, weariness, chaos, confusion, and a number of other unpleasant experiences and feelings. Sometimes we lose things we didn't want to lose in the process. Sometimes we look and feel like a wreck or a hot mess in the process of shedding, kind of like Kai. Now, I can't read a horse's mind, but I haven't seen evidence that they judge each other on the different ways they shed and the differences in the process for each of them. It's just something to think about. Now, horses don't technically need our help shedding. It's a natural process that happens without our assistance. They've developed ways of dealing with it on their own, from just enduring the process to scratching on trees or rolling on the ground. Some horses seek out some help when they are shedding. Sometimes they seek help from other horses, and they scratch each other's backs and sides and help each other out. And sometimes they seek out help from people with tools to help them. Juno is allowing Debbie to help her with her shedding and gently directing Debbie on where she wants to help to remove the old fur. And different horses prefer or need different tools. And the tools we use can be changed or updated during the shedding process. One tool that works well now may not work well in a couple of weeks. Humans often need help shedding too. They need supportive relationships, maybe someone to go through it with them, to guide them, to know what tools to use and when to use them. This is especially true when it is not an involuntary biological process. When we are intentionally seeking to shed old ways of being, we need support to do it. In fact, there is a lot of evidence that shows humans need each other in other ways than physical in order to grow and change and thrive. Our resilience comes from supportive relationships. But sometimes because of the things we have not yet shed, or simply our life circumstances, we don't have the supportive relationships we need in order to grow in new ways and shed the old. That's part of why we do what we do here at Pecan Creek Ranch, to help people through our work with them and the horses. Because we all need those supportive relationships. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this comparison of horse fur shedding and human being shedding. Do you have some things you want to shed from your life or way of being? If so, what's stopping you? Do you need some help? Would you be interested in a video that gave you some tips on how to get started with that process? Would something like that be supportive for you? Let us know in the comments. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel to see more content like this. Take a peek and see if this video, or this one, might be helpful to you as well. Thanks for watching, and take care of each other.